Thank you uh, very much and uh, for, um, and really for all your significant efforts. I think there was about fire, about six open fire hydrants of, of input coming in, which she, Doreen had to kind of fill a bucket for, for which I think was a kind of very useful kind of paper of uh, some significant input. But we just have about five minutes for uh, uh, a couple of questions before we have a break. And so I don't know if there's any burning questions. And both individuals will be on the panel. But Susan has a question over here, Susan Anderson. Um, just a, a quick question around the elasticity of your uh, policy direction. Mention a lot about the patients and the providers. Um, do you see this expanding for the citizens and the consumers, in particular in the area of expanded information coming from the public side as a match to the information that's contributed by the health system for social determinants of health, uh, monitoring, et cetera? Thanks. I think we'll both respond. That thank you for that question, um, and 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 I appreciate you um, uh, again, sort of pointing out the fact that I, I coming to this discussion for, as a as a healthcare provider. Um, my apologies for my own myopia in, in terms of the presentation. Um, absolutely, the vision for the integrated health record is is not only on um, uh, it's not only to to. Uh, elevate the quality of health care provided in the province, but it's to elevate the, the health of, of our communities. Um, and so, so my apologies for tending to have a bit of a, a health care centric view when, when, when discussing it, but, but, but you're absolutely right. One of the advantages of the IHR is that we're now reaching deeper into the community, really trying to focus on health promotion. Um, and as, 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 uh, as has been brought up in, in um, the, the, the speakers this morning, is the, the central role of primary care in, in terms of empowering them to do, to do more in terms of um, uh, health promotion and, and, and de-emphasize um, uh, disease treatment. Um, and the, um, again, having that interaction between um, different uh, um, uh, stakeholders in terms of public health. So having those connections with um, the uh, having that interface between um, uh, legislation and, and, and the healthcare system is, is very very powerful in terms of the social determinants. So um, again, understanding how um, you know issues like education um, and and again sort of and how and, and, and better interactions between public health and and, and the healthcare service uh, will certainly lead to, to to better outcomes and I think there's a lot of potential there for for synergizing efforts to to making our communities healthier. Um, yes, as part of the paper, it is recognized that policy and practice needs to evolve. Um, and, and part of that is to look at our provincial policies, our legislation, and harmonize um, um, those, the legislation, the policies with the needs of today's world. And so we recognize the continuum, the justice, the education, all of those children's services, all those needs and, and those programs and how they e push the person into acute or maybe not. And, and learn from that. So there is a desire to enhance um, the, the legislation to support this type of work. Uh, we have a ways to go yet. Um, we've got a little bit of learning to do, but uh, certainly there's the willingness to look at it. Okay, and just one uh, last question. Uh, Tracy, I think you had a question. Hi, good morning. Tracy Vosslick, Alberta Health Services Strategic Clinical Network. I, I just want to commend you on the work. I think it's a great start. One of the things, uh, recommendation number one was about um, making sure that professional bodies have access to Medicare. So I know we get pharmacy information and physician information, and I'm wondering about the strategy for nurse practitioners, community physiotherapy, uh, and complementary therapists who, who, for the patient's perspective, is their, their team. And where are we in really pushing the boundaries on who has access and who can contribute uh, to really round up that experience for people? Good question. Thank you, St Tracy. Um, we have just uh, uh, worked uh, with the chiropractors, dentists, and, chiro and, and optometrists to bring them into net care. Some of them are underway. Some of them are already experiencing pilot projects. We do see the benefit of adding other healthcare providers. So instead of changing the act every time a healthcare provider is seen to be a valuable part of the this system, you know, as we go to amend the act. Um, bringing in the health professions 
uh, act linkages would be really very beneficial. Um, obviously, that's not my decision. That's a government decision. But we do recognize the need for both public and private health care uh, providers to not only access net care as um, in relation to their scope of practice, but contribute those learnings that they can that they. Uh, that they have it in their offices. So it's a bit of a journey, um, um, but we do want to move there. Uh, there's a number of them. Physiotherapists is one of the ones that I've heard um, needing um, to be part of the team. And uh, so, the, and I think there's a number of other ones, so. Okay, and uh, so thank you very much. I'm just uh, in the interest of particular time, and both uh, Kim and uh, Doreen are gonna be on a, the panel at the end of the morning. Uh, so we'll be taking a break and uh, I'd like you all to be back at 11, uh, at 10.58, we'll be starting. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, but thanks very much and, uh, for all the speakers for the first session this morning. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.